Hello comrades and welcome back to Shanka show. Stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. My name is Sergey and on this picture I'm pretending like I'm riding my grandfather's moped, moped called Verkhovina. The uh, picture was taken probably sometime around 1980 when I was about 9 years old. Меня зовут Сергей, я родился в Советском Союзе. A copyright claims are a capitalist phenomena. It's very clear that the sole purpose of your channel is to slander the USSR and the image of socialism and communism. You do this behind a very believable facade of honesty, but your strong bias is clear to anyone who knows better. You earn off of Soviet curiosity by spreading the most negative portrayal of the USSR. At least have the integrity to show what Russia was before the USSR and what it was given by the revolution. Don't betray your roots so much that you will become a tool of Americans to make stupid crude jokes on the USSR. The Soviets did more to help the struggles of the third world, of minorities all over the world, than anyone else. Just have some integrity when earning a living from it. And I want to thank MC Lisha from Finland once again for this wonderful voiceover for Shanka hate mail. So a while back I recorded the video KGB is watching you where Soviet people afraid of the Department of State Security. We were explained that back in the 70s and 80s average Soviet person really wasn't afraid of KGB. I mean we had a lot of jokes about it but wasn't as bad as used to be during NKVD time during the Stalin era. So when I stumbled upon this uh, KGB document from 1976, I thought like, man, maybe we should be afraid of KGB at least a little bit because those guys were watching over the country and especially this document is about Ukraine pretty closely. This document was discovered by Ukrainian historian Eduard Andryushchenko. And he's posting some of his finds on his YouTube channel called KGB Files. So as I mentioned earlier, this document dates to July 26, 1976 and it's issued by KGB of Ukraine for the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Ukraine. So you could tell who is running the Republic. It's not government, it's Communist Party. And there is a red ink a stamp says Tavarishu Sherbitskamu VV Daložina. So Sherbitsky was the leader of the Communist Party of Ukraine, so he was the leader of Ukraine and he had uh, this report uh, sent to him too. And this is Informatsonne Sapshenya, so it's like an information bulletin that uh, tells about major events uh, about July 23, 24 and 25 of 1976. Just the very first lines of this report blew my mind. It basically says, on the territory of Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, as of July 25th, there were 11,420 foreigners from the capitalistic and developing countries. So KGB knew exactly how many foreigners from capitalist and developing countries were on the territory of Ukraine, which is about the size of Texas. Out of these 11,420 foreigners, 17 were diplomats, uh, out of those 17, 11 were in Kyiv, including the helper of the Air Force attache of the United States Embassy in the Soviet Union, Bole, which came uh, to Kyiv on Razvedovatelnaya Payeska, so it's like reconnaissance uh, trip. Also, there were a couple of uh, secretaries archivist uh, from the United States Embassy in Moscow, Murphy and Kost, that came along with the members of International Congress of Geographers. There were also other members of American Embassy, including Queen Graham, uh, that came to Kyiv because of the exhibition called Photography in the United States. I will talk about that exhibition a bit later. And there were also several members of Embassy of England, which is kind of interesting. They say Embassy of England, not Great Britain, as well as Canada and Mauritania, Jackson, Dubuia, and Kerry. They came to Kyiv just to look around. There were also four embassy diplomats in Odessa, including Marte Jogan from Austria, Loren from France, who was uh, traveling back to France, looks like it, so probably took a ship. Also, Eriks Gunther from the Federal Republic of Germany, which came 
through Odessa, says going into Soviet Union, and as well as first secretary of embassy of New Zealand in the USSR, Skoplop, came for vacation into Odessa. And of course it's safe to assume that at least one or two KGB agents were following each of those diplomats. So for the 17 diplomats in Ukraine you had at least a crew of 40-50 KGB agents following every step. There are two diplomats in Kharkov, second and largest city in Ukraine and a huge industrial area. One of them was an advisor for the German embassy in Moscow, Hesse Manfred, and second secretary of the Canadian embassy, Klaus and John. And it says, Razvedvatelna Payetka once again, so another reconnaissance mission in Kharkov. I don't know if I could believe that, but whatever. Next line they mention there's members of different delegations, 27 of those, Donetsk 12, Kiev 8, Odessa 3, and Nikopol 4. It's kind of interesting, it's only the largest cities of Ukraine. We had 5,301 tourists in Ukraine during those days. In Kiev 2,331, Odessa 1,365. Lvov is next, 406, Yalta, 400, Kharkov, 95, Ternopol, 87, Zaporozhye, 74, and other cities, 143. So look at that, they knew exactly where and how many tourists were all over the Ukraine. There are also 211 Inno Specialistov, which is like foreign specialists, so the people who came to help install new equipment at the factories or such. We never had conversation about those in the newspapers, any mass media, but we had 211 foreigners working at the uh, factories and so. The Dnipropetrovsk region, 36. Dnipropetrovsk, huge industrial area. Kharkov region, 35. Another industrial area. Varshilovgradskaya oblast, 34. Lvovskaya, 18. Donetskaya, 16. Khersonskaya, 15. Odessa again, 13. And other regions, 44. So quite a few foreigners helping um, during the, in the factories and stuff, but as I said, we never heard of that. KGB also tracked all the foreign students, total of 2,774, as well as people that arrived for the private business, 704 people. And once again, the, the list of every region, how many people in the Donetsk region and Kharkov region, and even 30 people were visiting in Chernigov region, where my grandparents are originally from. Also, there were 1,174 people of other categories, whatever could be the categories, but I said, you could tell that guys were keeping a really close count on everyone who came from the capitalist or developed country in Ukraine. The KGB also knew that in Odessa and Kherson seaports, those the largest ports, in Ukraine. Of course, they also had Sevastopol, but there was a Soviet Navy military base and they had, of course, no foreign ships in that port. So in Odessa and Kherson seaports, there were 25 ships from capitalistic and developing countries and the total amount of seamen or sailors was 1,212. And the following statistics kind of interesting because you can guess what ships brought based on uh, their country of origin. So they had six ships from the United States. That's a lot. And total of 220 uh, sailors. I would assume they brought probably grain. Five were from India. India were buying tea, a lot of it. So cotton, so that's probably products from India. Five were from Greece. No idea what we were buying from Greece back then. Two from England, one from Portugal, one from Holland, one from Liberia, Liberia, one from Sweden, one from Federal Republic of Germany, one from Algier, and one from France. What I find extremely curious here that the most amount of ships in Ukrainian ports, six, were from the United States of America. So it's 1976, we're at kind of the height of the Cold War. In the same time, they were the biggest trading partner of Ukrainian Soviet Social Republic, even bigger one than um, who was on place number two is India with five ships. And these reports also mentioned that on the territory of Ukraine, there were also 21,501 citizens of the socialist countries. So we're talking East Germany, Bulgaria, Hungary, and so on. 
Out of them, uh, 2,767 were students and other type of uh, educational type of uh, people. So 21,500, that's a lot. Page three is extremely interesting. Here they're talking about the situation at the 21st Olympic Games in Montreal, Canada. So despite that the report is about situation in Ukraine, there is a report about Olympic Games in Canada. So here we have a Ukrainian section of KGB sharing the information they got from the central office of KGB that reports to the Council of Ministers of Soviet Union. So according to the information, uh, situation around Soviet uh, sport delegation and journalists from the Soviet Union at the Olympics in general is normal. At the same time, there was noted uh, some activization of hostile and first of all nationalistic elements. You need to remember, of course, in Canada there are a lot of Ukrainians that moved even before World War One, after World War One, and a lot of them also moved after World War II. So there was a lot of Ukrainian nationalists living in Canada. So they were showing some hostile attitude towards the Soviet sport delegation. So a report continues. Ukrainian nationalists during the competition um, for soccer and volleyball where the Soviet teams were participating, they were uh, displaying nationalistic flags, which is blue and yellow which is now it became a national flag of Ukraine. It used to be nationalistic, now it's national. And also there were uh, yelling anti-Soviet slogans. The KGB report continues that in Olympic Village, as well as in the places of the competition, these anti-Soviet immigrants and other uh, people are attempting to... I don't know how to translate it, so it's like uh, they were you know, talking anti-Soviet stuff to our um, sports people. And quite often there were noticed cases of spreading around anti-Soviet literature, probably Archipelag Gulag books and other uh, books. So KGB was watching and being concerned about that anti-Soviet. It's like almost like hostile treatment of our um, sportsmen. And now KGB is talking about uh, tourists from the United States because they provide this background of chauvinistic rage uh, because that's what they have going on uh, from the uh, sports fan from the United States. Uh, besides crazy support of American um, sportsmen, they also demonstrate as a provocation support to uh, gymnastic ladies from Romania as well as uh, Japanese gymnasts and uh, sportsmen from other countries. Who, whoever played uh, against the Soviets, Americans were supporting them like crazy, as long as it will help Americans to take gold. So it's kind of interesting. So that was total chauvinistic rage from the Americans. Okay, now we're turning back to the Soviet Ukraine, the city of Cherkasy, and the report about reconnaissance mission of American diplomats. So in July 21st and 23rd in city of Cherkasy there were uh, two professional Kadrovi professional spies, helpers of the military attaché of American Embassy in Moscow, Williams and England. And they made a visual Razvetka reconnaissance of the military and industrial facilities walked around the perimeter of the military Vaiskavaya uh, Chai, so like a military facility. So that the military installation was actually Tankavaya Divizia, uh, Tank Division number 43128. We never called the military bases. There was just like, there'll be fans and the guards and there'll be this military outfit located there permanently. Like we had those right in the middle of Kiev. So this report continues that those American diplomats were peeking through the fences, twice att attempted to walk closely to the park of the military vehicles. So they were curious at the tanks. And they said that while doing this reconnaissance mission, uh, diplomats were uh, acting really rudely and in open. So they weren't like hiding like in movies in the middle of the night trying to sneak in. They would just walk right to the fence and trying to and see what's going on. Now it goes interesting part. So 
definitely they had they've been followed by KGB agents, but since they technically probably didn't break the law, they don't want to uh, do anything. So it says в целях пресечения сбора военной информации in with the purpose of uh, stopping these guys uh, gathering military intelligence, Williams in England were stopped by the military patrol 30 meters away from the entry to the this military facility. So you could walk around that place, no issues, like we did all the time, but since they knew this guy's an American, so KGB called the military outfit, so they sent military patrol and they stopped them under like, okay, show me your ID, you know, show me your housewives. So after being uh, stopped, uh, there, these diplomats were told that they do something they're not supposed to do, and, and they're, after that, I guess they called a uh, local opera robotnik особого отдела KGB, so the special department of KGB representative, and witnesses, they wrote down act, so about this stopping the people. So Americans didn't refuse uh, all this pretense, can say it how to say it in English, so it's like whatever they were uh, blamed of doing, but they refused to sign this paperwork and the information about reconnaissance mission of Williams in England was uh, transferred to the central office of KGB in Moscow. Okay, so we're gonna stop right here and I'm gonna make a part two of this quite interesting 1976 KGB report. If you guys have any questions, please post below this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. By the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet 